yeah, I definitely don't think there's one answer. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and like I said, I think there's definitely, you know, there's definitely different things going on. You can see a, and this actually happened to me once I saw a little boy walking through my window um, in an upstairs house one time in 2000, I think this was 2017. And um, I knew he was from another dimension. However, I'm a trained psychic medium. Mm -hmm. So if somebody else had that experience, they would just think he was a ghost. They wouldn't know the difference. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Into the Pit. I'm very privileged to have Miss April DeMille here with me, and she is a psychic medium. I had to write this down because it's quite a list. Uh, you are a mentor, a life coach, a healing arts practitioner, a hypnotherapist, um, you're a Reiki master, and an angel guide. Yeah. Quite yeah. a list. Did I leave anything out? Uh, I'm ordained in ministry. That's that's actually a thing too. <laughs> okay, we have something in common. So am I. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and uh, thank you for having me here. Um, my name is April Demille. It's, it might be kind of confusing because it still says April Davis on my screen. I haven't done all the stuff yet, but uh, trying to get all my stuff aligned. But uh, yeah, it's good to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. So, um, when did you first realize you had abilities? So I was, I didn't realize it. So I was born with them. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I guess I came into this experience. I would say on, I was already all gears on, like everything go, like all systems go. Um, I have all the clear abilities, um, and mediumship and channeling. And so, you know, when you, when you are always within yourself, you don't realize there's something different about you. Mm -hmm. And when you're born that way, I think it was, it took me till I was about the age of four or five before I finally realized, oh, not everybody sees the things that I see. So like, it took me some time um, before I had the maturity to understand that not everybody was like me in my world. And uh, so I would say probably roughly about the age of four or five when I realized um, the people around me didn't see the things that I could see. And I was, um, I was a bother uh, in, in my family. I, I didn't come into a family that had, um, you know, lineage of mediums before me and all this stuff. I was, I was the cycle breaker. That was me. And so, um, so they, we all had to learn together, uh, at different rates, obviously. And so, um, in the, in the world I grew up in, I was viewed as crazy and satanic or demonic, like all the things, because I could do these things and, see these things and heal these things and it scared the fuck out of people it scared the shit out of me <laughs> <laughs> it scared me too as i got older i can't imagine you know looking and seeing something that nobody else sees that's there yeah um i, I will say growing up i would i would hear things mm -hmm. and i just took it as it was my brain playing tricks on me that I would hear someone call my name or say something to me. And sometimes it wasn't always clear what was being said. And sometimes it was. And then later on, I mean, I'm talking, you know, I was in my forties when uh, I met a, a psychic medium who told me that I did have these abilities. And uh, I'm, I'm just now starting to kind of take it a little more serious and trying to to learn how to come into my abilities i've gotten some good advice but uh what kind of advice would you give someone who maybe they think they're going nuts they're seeing something they're hearing something um the first thing i would say is if you're hearing anything seeing anything feeling anything for one record keeping is always going to be your number one best friend record everything if you're having an experience write it down jot down the date um, and don't dismiss everything you're experiencing, even if you don't understand it right now, your, your ego is going to try to like rationalize and, and make sense of everything. And that the, the moment you're doing that, you're already shutting down your experience. Yeah. That's kind of the way I look at it is like I said, I thought I was going nuts you know, yeah. or my brain's just 
you know, playing tricks on me. Um, there was a point where I had, I had been going through quite a bit. Um, uh, I had my, my first wife had left me for another guy and I got into a relationship and looked like it was going to get serious. And then she just, uh, just did a 180 on me and that was it. And I went, I just had a breakdown and I seriously thought that I had completely gone nuts because I'm hearing some voices telling me to do things that weren't so nice, you know, and it, my kids found me curled up in a closet and I mean, I, I was crying. I was scared. I didn't know what to do and ended up checking into a hospital. And then I find out where we were living, which was, I mean, literally you can walk out the front door in two minutes. You were in the graveyard. Oh, okay. And there was a portal there. Mm -hmm. And apparently things were coming through and stuff would happen. I mean, my lazy boy chair, and if you're familiar with those, those are not light. They'd be turned upside down in the morning okay. or uh, a grandfather clock that I got from my grandfather would be laying on the floor. And if it just tipped over like a cat knocked it over or something, I think you'd hear a crash, but it's laying there like it was set on, you know, where it was set. Yes. And found out that was part of the experiences was my abilities, but here it is a portal. Have you come across like portals in, in like people's homes where they have experiences like that? Yeah, I have. And I'd actually, I actually refer to my own self as a portal because I have so many interactions with so many beings on so do, in so many realms that I feel like I'm more like a portal myself, but yeah, I've, I've experienced portals for sure. I, they're everywhere. Um, and, uh, I, I'm, I'm sensitive and tapped in enough that I can, you know, feel imprints in properties or homes or, you know, portals or ley lines. It, it's yeah, it's, um, but I will say this too. Um, there was a time in my life when I was surrounded by, and I, I was going through the same thing like you, I was going through a lot of challenging stuff, traumatic stuff, terrible breakups, abusive relationships, all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, that was kind of like, you know, a, le a level to the dark night of soul where we have these awakenings and these transformations. And um, I remember during that time, always being afraid and the, the things I was tapped into were also very fear-based. Now that's not the case. Um, I don't, I don't give energy to those things that are fear-based or don't feel good or don't feel safe. I won't even give it a second of thought. So is it because of that turmoil in your life is why these, these things kind of attract to you? Um, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's because of turmoil. I think it's because I didn't already have a solid foundation while I was enduring the turmoil, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I get you. Mm -hmm. um, and because of the things that you've gone through, I guess you decided to uh, start helping other people. Yeah. Yeah. So now, um, you know, there's different ways that people work with me. Um, I specialize in narcissistic recovery <laughs> and I specialize in uh, grief, grief reconstruction. And that happened after I lost my daughter in 2012. Oh, so, so so now I help people and, and as a psychic medium, I also help people tap into their own abilities and, and learn that they even have them. Most people, we all have them. Not everybody knows it. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. That's what I've been told. You, you know, something you said a while ago, you, you said that you've seen fairies. Mm -hmm. um, while I'm thinking of that, um, I have a couple of videos that, that we'd taken during an investigation where I am alone in the room and what I first took as a like a bug or something had <laughs> flown in behind me and then disappeared yeah a and then the second video I'm sitting on a bed trying to get some EVPs when something flies into my back and out of my chest okay. and it it looks like a a butterfly or something you know uh, mm -hmm. or a large moth and um the psychic medium friend of mine she said yeah you have a fairy that follows you and and it's kind of there for you when you're doing these investigations um 
can you kind of maybe elaborate on fairies and like what they really are? I mean, I can only tell you what my experience is with fairies. Um, my very first, my very earliest memory, I was only a year old. I couldn't talk yet, but I could walk. I was still in diapers and my mom had put me down to bed and she had this big teddy bear laying to the right side of me on the edge of the bed. And the be the bear was like bigger than I was. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember um, this little fairy crawling up to the top of the bear and it stood at the top of the bear and looked at me and it said my name and I flung the bear and did the whole thing and like went running out of the room screaming for my mom, but I couldn't talk. I was, I was just very little. And so she didn't know what was going on and I was just a chaotic mess. <laughs> and that was my very first experience. Now I was afraid because I didn't know, I didn't understand what it was, but are fairies scary or bad? No, they're not. Yeah. Well, can they be like guardian angels? I think um, that we definitely have guardian angels in all different forms. So whether it's fairies, galactics, animal spirits, um, yes, they are guardians. Okay. Galactics, is that like aliens or what mm -hmm. is it? Yeah. Oh, so wow. Galactics, yeah. Oh, I'll so whether, definitely... whether you're calling in your guides, your ancestors, your angels, there is no limit to who is out there to help us. Well, now when I go into an investigation, I mean, I, I don't really have fear. I have more curiosity than I do fear. I mean, I'm not going to say that I never get afraid, but right. I'm, I'm so curious. I'll put myself in a situation, you know, um, do you think that maybe the, the fairy or fairies that I've seen on camera, that they're just kind of helping me and protecting me? I would say that if that's, if that's something that resonates for you, then that's probably true. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, and I, I would also venture to say that they're, they're protecting the area that you're uh, investigating also the people there. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, but they, they appear to me, they have attraction to certain people or are they there for everyone? Um, I think it's more like, um, I, I think that they can appear to anybody who actually wants to see them. So if you make it a practice and it's just like, if you want to train your abilities and you make it a practice, it's there, it's there for the seekers. So it's not, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. And since you brought up the aliens, um, tell, tell me your experiences with them. Um, so I, I would say the first time I had a UFO experience, I was 15 years old and I was in Utah when that happened. And then I've seen a uh, Draco reptilian male in the backyard in a house uh, in Utah also. Um, so that was an experience that I had in, uh, I think the very early of 2017. Um, and I've, you know, I have galact, I'm channeling galactic information pretty much all the time. Um, Big, Bigfoot are also galactic. They're not from here. Um, but to be honest, neither are humans. <laughs> We're not from here either. <laughs> so, um, so there's that. So, yeah, I would say I've had quite a range of uh, galactic experiences also, but my openness to channeling and working with them on a regular basis has only really happened within the last year. Oh, really? Are they going to finally reveal themselves to us? I mean, they're doing that now with people like me that, you know, other people like me that are having experience that they're doing that. They've been doing that for ages. Well, I'm, you know, I've, I've kind of gotten that hint that they're, they're trying to, but I mean, is this like going to be in, you know, Hey, I'm on the news and Hey, I'm an alien, or is this just going to be like, no, it's, it's not, it's not going to be some the, quite the experience you're thinking of in your mind. not like that. Okay. Not for a long time. Um, the, well, and also I kind of feel like some of that information that when it's there is filtered. Well, is Mark Zuckerberg an alien? Oh, you know, I don't even know. <laughs> I've never <laughs> given him a second thought. I have no idea. <laughs> There's a theory out there that he's a reptilian. I mean, so. <laughs> if you think about it, so here's, here's my theory. I think we all are. I think we're all hybrids. If you want me to be honest. Um, if you think about it, like none of us are just like 
one race. None of us are just white. None of us are just Asian or African or whatever. We're all hybrids of some sort anyway. So how far-fetched is it to realize that there could be more hybrid hybridization going on than that? Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm a big believer in UFOs uh, and, and aliens and um, I'm with you. Um, I, I mean, we're all, we have to be. Um, they find those microorganisms and stuff on you know, meteor fragments and things like that all the time. Yeah. Um, and, and is it because we were brought here? Like they, the theories they have on ancient aliens, where we were kind of brought here to to mine for the for the uh, aliens to get you know what they need for space travel and oh yeah and for the elements or the gold or whatever right, right yeah um i think that's definitely something worth thinking about um i've never it's funny because i'm so tapped into this oneness that like there's things like that i had somebody even ask me if bigfoot uh how bigfoot takes a hoop or something or how's he take care of his like body or whatever and i'm like i i don't even know like i never ask questions like that it's so like I don't, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just, I'm so checked out from that part of like the mundane daily stuff. I'm just like, I have no idea. So it's like, if something comes up that I feel like I want to ask, then I'll ask. And if not, I just like oblivious. <laughs> it's so weird. So I'm just like, those are definitely things like that are great conversations and great things to ask about, but it's stuff that I haven't really tapped into a whole lot yet. There are, there are things that they have given me information about in reference to Bigfoot, in reference to hybridization, um, in reference to my own genetic engineering. And uh, and so there's things like that. But again, this is still kind of new to me because I've only been doing the channeling with them for like a year. Mm. Is, have you discovered why it is that we can't seem to, to, to find them when we're out there looking for them? I and mean, sometimes people do get glances, but they just seem to disappear. Well, it's more or less, there's a couple of things and that, that it really just depends on the person too. Um, one instantly your ego takes over. And if you get afraid of what you see, you're shutting down your experience mm -hmm. Two, if your intention of seeing them isn't a hundred percent where it needs to be, you're not ever going to see them. Um, I mean, I, I'm, um, I'm one of those guys that when I go on investigation, I, I'm, I try to to be as uh, courteous to uh, a spirit as I can. Right. Uh, you know, you, you don't know what their situation was and why they're there. Um, if I was to go out and investigate for cryptids and I ran across the Bigfoot, I'm just curious. I have no ill intent. So right. I guess that would make me more susceptible to seeing one. Yeah, right. So I would say if your intent was of love and understanding and compassion and not of trying to conquer and destroy like the rest of fucking humanity then yeah. i would say you'd be a lot more aligned to having an experience yes yeah what angers me is there was a group that was planning on going on a big bigfoot a hunt and they were out to uh to hunt one down and kill it and yeah, i'm like that's that's messed up why it's sad, we, it's, sad. it's really really sad you know, is this just uh, another humanoid type creature that, uh, um, I mean, has no ill intent of their own? Why would you want to go kill it? Because that's the world we live in. <laughs> I say that um, as sarcastically as possible because uh, the world that, the way the world has been is, like I said, it's, you know, conquer, destroy, divide you know, all the stuff. And so, yeah, we're not going to ha be very aligned with these experiences of oneness and love when we just want to um, tear apart everything. Yeah, I hear that. Uh, now, one theory is, is that these Bigfoots are kind of um, a, a servant type for uh, the aliens. Is that what they are? I mean, you could say that maybe it's not quite so derogatory. It's not, you know, it's, it's, um, I would it's say like a they, scout. Yeah. That's a good way to look at it. Actually. Um, it's more like 
team members because the Galactics have a real hard time taking physical form here. Mm -hmm. Um, And so Bigfoot is more fourth dimensional to where they can kind of pop in and out um, of three dimensional. So um, what happened is there was a planet called Maldek uh that i believe was destroyed and it is now like an asteroid belt between like mars and jupiter or some shit like that um so they were transplanted here um and yes scouts a great word because they take samples they're like scientists actually Mm. they're taking samples of the earth they're watching over us and our progress um and they're able to go back and forth Um, between dimensions easier than we can and easier than galactics can if that makes sense to some degree now when it comes to dimensions and i i have my own theory is that you know we are all made of uh of of a uh what's the word i'm looking for um like a frequency you know because of our atoms they they move they have a frequency to them and I, I think that some people are able to manipulate their their atoms and change that frequency and be able to go between several dimensions. I think that we're the dimensions are all here. It's just what they you are, see is yeah. different from what somebody else sees. I mean, you're looking at a camera or a computer, mm-hmm. and that's the atoms and the way they're brought together. That's what we see. But... Right that's the frequency they're on that's what makes it what we consider physical right 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 but somebody else on a different frequency might see something different here um now how close am i to being correct on that um i would say as far as like timelines go um the past the present the future everything's happening simultaneously and so are the dimensions but i would say that our physical our physical human experience is very limiting, um, which we we know it feels heavy. Sometimes we struggle being human in our experience. It doesn't always feel nice, um, and it's very uh, it's definitely very physical. Um, but I would say that there are other dimensions outside of that for sure. So, like I said, Bigfoot is somewhere between four and five D dimension, and they can they can dematerialize. They are interdimensional. Um, I've had one disappear right in front of my face. Um, I've seen a cat walk through a portal. Um, I've seen some stuff that leads me to believe that, yes, all the dimensions are at our, um, they're easy to access if we, if we're able to open up to the idea. Is, is it possible that what we perceive as maybe ghosts or just someone on that another dimension and another frequency that yeah. are kind of changing that frequency and we're seeing it yeah so that's a great point point. i'm glad you brought that up especially because you're doing investigations so i assume you probably work with psychic and psychics and mediums right right so this is why it's so important to kind of have a psychic medium around because they can pretty much tell you the difference um a lot of times they can pick up on an imprint um a soul that needs crossed over or is this um, a different lifetime that you just caught a glimpse of? It, there's so many things. That, and a lot of times a psychic medium can kind of tell the difference. Yeah, there's just so many theories out there of what's, what ghosts are. I mean, like the, uh, the, sur- the surroundings, whether it be the wood or concrete mm-hmm. or whatever, are getting almost like a, a recording, like a VCR. Yeah. And you're, it's able to be played back by whatever the... I guess the atmosphere is at that moment. And I mean, mean, there's so many things out there. What what do you believe? Are many of the theories are correct? That there's more than one reason why there's ghosts and things out there? Or uh, there's not one answer to it? Yeah, I definitely don't think there's one answer. (laughs) Like I said, I think there's definitely, you know, there's definitely different things going on. You can see a, and this actually happened to me once I saw a little boy walking through my window um, in an upstairs house one time in 2000, I think this was 2017. And um, I knew he was from another dimension. However, I'm a trained psychic medium. 
So if somebody else had that experience, they would just think he was a ghost. They wouldn't know the difference. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you ever get messages that you you need to pass along to other people when you're getting uh, your um, channeling? I tap into, well, that's actually another great question because um, there's a thing called house rules, which means I'm in charge, I'm the boss. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not working, I'm not going to listen to that message. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like it's, this is, this is where I have my boundaries, right? It's like, if I had a sign on me that said business hours from nine to five kind of thing, it's, it's the same kind of concept. Like if I'm not working, I'm not working. And this is, this is my time. So you can get out of my room until I'm ready. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's literally how it works. So do I get messages? Yes. But most of the time I save that that um that information for while i'm in sessions uh, those messages you get are they for everyone or is it for particular people um it depends i don't typically just tap in for whatever um if i have questions of my own i'll ask um for my own reasons but um you know sometimes i do get collective messages um i have gotten collective information from the galactics this year i've gotten um I've had premonitions of things that happen on a worldwide, you know, like worldwide events, like school shootings and floodings and even COVID. Um, even I had uh, information about that coming ahead of time. So it's, it, yeah, it really just depends. Um, typically, like I said, I try to, my boundaries are really good. So if it's not information that I feel like um, I need to worry about, then I just push it out. No, this might sound silly, but I would love to just go off with one of these aliens and just get out of here. Oh, would it, is too. it going to, is it going to be possible? Um, no, not in this, not in this lifetime that I'm aware of. Oh. Um, I can't say that for some people. Well, okay. Actually, that's not true. You are probably having experiences where you're going off with them. That's probably already happening. Um, your physical body isn't completely aware of it if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So in the way that you're thinking, like, can I just be zapped up, like beam me up, Scotty, get me out of here. No, it's not going to happen like that. Not the way you think. Um, are you having experiences? Probably so, especially where you already are so open to that, that option. Then I would say that you've probably been having an experiences and just not aware of it. Okay. That you brought up something there that I would love to discuss with you because I've I've taken it as uh, astral projection. Yeah, that's when, literally in your dreams. Yeah, because when I was younger, I was a teenager. Um, I remember sitting up in my bed, but yet seeing my body still on the bed, yeah. and I walked out of my my room, and the the front porch was right there where my my room was at. I walked out on the front porch and I remember looking up and seeing the trees and everything. I mean, just as it is. Yeah. And then started to, to go upward. And as I'm going upward, I'm looking down and I start to see the top of my house, the whole roof. I'm starting to see the top of the trees. And the next thing I'm looking around, I see clouds all around me and I, I look and there's all these stars and I look down, I can see the earth and I'm, I'm continually going and I'm seeing the actual Milky Way. And as I'm getting closer to it in my head, I'm going, am I going to be able to get back? And I could see a tether on my foot and it's like mm -hmm. as if it just yanked it. And then everything that I just seen going upwards, I saw in reverse. Yeah. And then I saw the roof. And then I, it's like immediately I saw my room, I saw my body, boom, I hit it, I woke up immediately. And I mean, my heart's going 90 to nothing. And I'm, I'm like, wow, what, what just happened? You know, mm -hmm. was that, and I was told that that was actually something that happened with uh, an alien encounter. Can you tell me what you think it is? I mean, it sounds to me like you definitely had astral projection. Um, whether or not it was alien, I don't know. Um, I'd have to actually, you know, have time to sit sit with you and unpack that. But if um, I can definitely say it's 
uh, astral projection because we all do that. Not all of us know that we do it mm. and not all of us know how to control it. So there's astral projection is literally, there's astral projection and astral travel. So astral projection is literally having awareness that we have now in our daily reality, but in the dream side. So bringing over that awareness is the basic idea of astral projection, leaving your body and traveling is more like astral travel. So there's, there's a couple of those things going on, but we all leave our bodies um, because that's the only time we can basically go home and feel recharged and feel limitless to keep us feeling lighter and going when we're in our human experience. It's kind of like plugging us in, right? Oh, mm -hmm. like we plug our phones in at night. We're plugging ourselves in. All right, cool. Let's recharge for the next, the next day. Right. That's basically what we're doing. Wow. I'm, I'm so interested in all that stuff. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, is this really happening to me? Am I making this up in my head? No. Um, yeah. You're definitely not making it up. No. I had another experience where I traveled to a house that I'd never been to before. And I walked around the house and I was looking, I could actually see the people that lived there sitting on their couch, watching television and uh, walk through seeing all the furniture, all these things. And a couple of weeks later, and I was working for an exterminating company at the time, I got to a house and I walked in and I was kind of set back, set back, you know, because here it is. Everything that I saw in my <laughs> dream is there. And I knew the whole layout of the house before I even walked through the whole thing. That is crazy. That is a premonition. It is a personal premonition, but it was seeing an event before it happened in your own timeline. And it's kind of almost like deja vu um, because what you're doing is your, your soul is moving forward to look at your chart and your timeline to see where you're headed. And then when you show up in your reality there and you're like, what the fuck? I've seen this before <laughs> because you have seen it. Your body was literally viewing it to see where you were going. Can you do that on command or is it just yes. something really? How do you, oh, how yeah. do you do that? Um, it's a practice. I'm actually writing a book about it. <laughs> oh, wow. It's, it's actually a whole practice. Um, it's, you know, there's, um, it's, it's literally just as simple as like when I was talking about house rules, having boundaries and knowing that you're in charge. Mm -hmm. You literally just say, Hey, I want to do this. And the more you keep practicing that and making sure that you're repeating that within yourself, I want to experience this, or I want to go here, or I want to do this. You will do it. Wow. I'm going to have to get that book because I really would love <laughs> to continue to do that. Yeah. It's um, I've been able to, you know, when you wake up from dreams, I've been able to go right back into that dream. Um, like, oh, I wake up too early and that was a freaking awesome dream. What the fuck? So I'm going <laughs> right back into that. So like, I, I'm like, no, I'm going right there. You have the ability to, um, I actually just had this conversation with someone else when you're having night terrors and bad dreams and things like that. You have the ability to tell that shit to fuck off, like cut it out. Like you can stop that. All you have to do is know that you have the power and just say, get the hell out of here. That's all you got to do. Yeah, those night terrors are awful. They, yeah, and they ruin your life. I had them. After my daughter died, I was riddled with grief and night terrors and all this stuff. And um, my own practices are what stopped them. Not my psychiatrist, wow. not my therapist, not my doctors, not any medications. It was me knowing that I could stop them. It, that's what stopped them, which is why I'm, now I'm going to write a book about it. <laughs> Um, yeah but when you go through paralysis and things mm -hmm. like that oh my god Ed, and paralysis is actually just um what that is a lot of people think it's demonic or something's holding you down or whatever whatever what's happening is you're actually in the alpha state so you're mm -hmm. in between the the dream and the wake mm -hmm. and you're aware of it your ego catches like like a, like a, the, your ego kind of catches on and then it's like, what the fuck? And it like freaks out as you're trying to make that transition. So then it feels like you don't have control. Something's there trying to like hurt you when it's really just you trying to get into you. Right. <laughs> That's all it really is. And so, but we don't know, most people don't know that. So they panic and they think they're being attacked by some dark demonic evil thing that wants to hurt them and give them paralysis and all the stuff. Um, I had one that uh, 
it, it was so real where these asteroids or whatever are hitting the, the the planet and I'm trying to duck and dodge and I mean it was so real I thought it actually was happening and seeing all this go on and everything getting destroyed and I never want to have another dream like You're that like, again. I never want to see that shit again. <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, bad dreams will mess you up. I know before, um, like back when I was having the night tears and bad dreams, they would ruin my. It would ruin me for three days. Three days mm -hmm. straight if I had a dream like that. It. Oh, I was. I was done for. Like the, it ruined my half my week. Gee. Let's get into a little more happier note here. You are a <laughs> life coach. Now, I, I do I have another podcast, which is all about positivity, inspiration, and motivation. And I, I interview a lot of life coaches. Okay. Um, and everyone seems to have their own little niche. And I'm I'm assuming that uh, part of what you do, you uh, kind of bring your abilities into that. Am, am I correct? Yeah. I mean, my abilities, I can't get rid of them. I tried that. It didn't work. Um, so it's it is all, you get all of me and all of the things I do. So, um, so yeah, I would say that now there is kind of a difference because if I, if we're coaching and I'm mentoring you mm -hmm. on grief reconstruction or narcissistic relationship recovery or something, uh, you know, some sort of traumas, um, then most of our work is going to be geared that way. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, and that's a little bit different than a psychic reading or tapping into your psychic abilities. They are very different, but in the sense that uh, if I get intuitive information to suggest to you, it's still going to come through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't want people thinking that they're going to a life coaching session and they're going to get a, a reading each time. <laughs> yeah. Because readings aren't part of that. Right. They're definitely separate. <laughs> In fact, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, the way I do things, I, here's the thing before I will coach and mentor someone. I almost always do a reading with them first, because if I take you through life coaching or a mentorship bundle, like say I work, work a program with you for like six weeks, I am definitely not going to do a psychic reading after I've gotten to know you, because that kind of takes away the credibility. Yeah. So you'll either do one with me before, or you'll have to wait after that, like a year or two before when I don't really know what's going on with you anymore. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, it's, it kind of takes away the credibility. And also on top of that, now I have an emotional bias as to what comes through because I've connected with you. Mm -hmm. I care about your well being, just like you're my family. So I, it doesn't mean I can't get accurate information, but it does mean I'm still human. And sometimes you know, I want, I want what's what you want for you. And so I can still kind of be biased and I don't want that. That doesn't give you the, it, it, it doesn't give you the best outcome that way. One thing that was kind of common amongst everyone that I talked to that are life coaches is how uh, the, the pandemic changed the way you did things. Did, did you have to change a, a little bit for that? No, actually, um, when I graduated school, I created my business to be all remote and all online. Oh, so okay. it didn't change anything for me at all. It just, uh, it, not in that sense. It, it, it actually just kind of helped, um, because I had already created everything from the very beginning in 2019 to be all remotely. And, and so now that everybody's doing it all remotely, I guess it helps in that sense because mm -hmm. it was, you know what I mean? It's not very far fetched when everybody's doing it, but I had already kind of made it that way. So it really didn't alter it that much for me. And everything you seem to do, you, it appears that you have this, I don't know, a, a love for people and to help people. And, yeah. uh, I, you know, you, you're a Reiki master as well. And uh, tell me, uh, first off, tell me exactly what, what you do. For Reiki you and know, Reiki. therapy? Yes. So I, I'm, so here's something that most people don't know about me, actually. Um, I am certified in hypnotherapy and I am certified as a Reiki master. I do not practice them and offer them as services. Okay. So, um, so most of the stuff that I learned, I will incorporate some modalities when I'm 
coaching and mentoring some, someone. So whether it be guided meditation or something to that degree, right? And sometimes I will offer distant Reiki sessions, like 15, 15 minute sessions. If somebody's already working with me on a program for whatever, for whatever that purpose is. But if it's like, you're coming to me to just do hypnotherapy or just do Reiki, I don't do that. Mm -hmm. Well, with I mean, the way the world is and people are, it's got to be difficult to keep that positive attitude towards people. But you seem to to grasp that very well. And, uh, you know, how do you keep that positive attitude the way the, the world is? You know, that's a really great question because um, I would definitely say if I was going to lose my shit, I would have done it when my daughter died. Yeah. Um, and, and believe me, there were plenty of times that I fucking wanted to. Um, but I would also say that there is a part of me, my higher self, if you will, that has a lot more grace than I do. <laughs> and it keeps me very well balanced. Um, and, I, and because I'm tapping taps so well into that oneness, um, I know that everybody's doing the very best they can with, with where they're at in life, whatever their resources are, whatever the lack of resources are, whatever, whatever it is, everybody struggles at some level. Right. And, um, and then the fact that I have boundaries and I know myself so well, um, you know, even if people are shitty to me, um, there's a part that, uh, I have to be accountable for because am I allowing them in my space when they act like that? Right. So what part of that is really my responsibility? You know, it's, it's all about learning where we're allowing people to, um, you know, kind of push at our boundaries and where we're allowing. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense, but I think, I think uh, it's definitely a balance. It's definitely a practice. <laughs> well, I mean, the world just seemed to have crapped on me from the beginning yeah. And I try to keep a positive attitude. I like to joke around and I, I'm very friendly and, and I, I, I never really meet a stranger. But, uh, you know, I got into uh, preaching and I, I was a Baptist preacher for about five years. OK. And my preacher, he uh, he got a rumor from someone and then I got accused of uh, trying to, uh, I was trying to cause division or something at the church. And it was all because somebody else had come to me to tell me a rumor about someone else. And instead of telling them I didn't want to hear it, I just let them talk. Mm -hmm. And I guess they got caught telling this rumor around and then he just wanted to put it off on me. And so I got my ministry taken away from me. Oh. And all these things happened and no one would listen to my side of the story. Uh, my, my brother, my father and my best friend, they all ended their lives uh, within a couple of years of each other. And I finally, I just got so mad. I was mad at God. I was mad at the, the world that everyone around me uh, went back to drinking and drugs and you know running around doing all these things that i had vowed not to do again mm -hmm. and it it took me gosh like um, about 20 years before i finally started to get back on the, my spiritual path again and trying to help other people and i i don't know how people can stay on path after things like that happen i mean you know you you lost your daughter and yet you you stayed the course i didn't it took me um, all this time to come back it took me a long time too though um i wouldn't say that my story sounds easy at all either because i grew up in a household where where my parents were drug dealers and prostitutes oh my god i was dealing drugs at the age of 14 was my first drug deal of my own for my mom um, um, so between that and, you know, all the different abuses that you could pro probably even think of, um, and I had, you know, been in some relationships with 
pretty, pretty serious narcissistic individuals. I had been cut with knives, all kinds of things. Um, so I, I wouldn't say mine looks pretty either. Um, and I, I also had my own problems with drugs at one point. Um, I think I, I was a late starter, even though I was dealing drugs at 14, I wasn't really into drugs until I was almost in my thirties. Um, and at that point I was kind of just self-medicating and didn't really know why I was so sad and depressed all the time. I wanted to die all the time, like all the yeah. things. Um, and so I, after my daughter died, that was really, uh, it was life altering in more ways than one for sure. And, um, I'll tell you the, the number one thing that turned my life around, it was not, uh, ignoring that I had these abilities. So until 2017, I was angry at God. I told God to fuck off every fucking day. I did not care who liked it. Um, mm -hmm. I had been accused of being a witch, satanic, demonic, all the stuff, because I had all these weird things about me that scared people. And frankly, they scared me too, because I didn't understand them either. Um, and I wasn't around people that could help me learn. Um, I was just around people that wanted to condemn me for it. And so in, it wasn't until 2017, I'd been homeless and my, I'd been homeless for a long time, I, I think for like seven years at that point. Um, so I was finally at this breaking point where I sat there with myself and I was like, I don't know what to do different. I've done everything I can possibly think of. And I don't know what to do different. I'd gotten even sober in 2012 and even sobriety hadn't made me want to live anymore. Mm. And I was like, what the fuck am I missing here? And my guide was like, why don't you try actually telling people you're a psychic? Why don't you actually admit it? And I was like, no way you're out of your fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, no way. Get out of here. Go out of my room. I don't want to talk to you. And so that was, that was the magic though. Like it was really what changed my whole life. It was not hiding from who I really was, the core of my essence. And that was literally the, the pivotal point. And there was no going back from that. I literally had to come out of the closet. <laughs> like, wow. Hey, this is me. No going back now. And it did change my life. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is, is, you know, God gives us free will. And part of that free will is, you know, we get to do whatever we want to do. Um, but there's consequences that come along with it and god gave us some rules to live by and if we live by those rules then things will go a little more smoothly but everybody has to be on board unfortunately not the whole world's going to be on board with it so that's why the things happen in this world it's not god's fault he's given us free will to do what we want yeah and i blamed him for everything and it wasn't him and he's he's been with me through my whole journey but i haven't always been with him if that right. makes sense yep it totally makes sense mm. absolutely and a lot of to a lot of uh me once i came out about my abilities and started to embrace that i can't get rid of this i've already tried that um i started being able to be accountable of who was in my environment because we're mm -hmm. all products of our environment right yep. who's right. who's around you who's shaming you who's talking down to you who's who's manipulating you who's abusing you you have to take responsibility for who you keep company with and if all those people were around me were christians and baptists and i i'd, been, I'd grown up that way um mormons that were telling me i was satanic and demonic for being psychic well i had to change my scenery so I had to change my playgrounds, right? Just like when you're getting sober, you change your playgrounds. That's so right. it's no different. Um, I do not, I am not active in churches now because to me, they are very fear-based. They are all about alienation. And I don't want to say all of them because that's not fair. I want to say my experiences with the ones that I've had in my life were all about, um, you know, alienation, separation, um, mm -hmm. we're going to heaven and you're not, this is a sin, blah, 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 blah. Um, 
burning hell pits, all the stuff, right? So um, that whole fear-based thing, um, even the fact that people think that if you don't act a certain way, then, you know, then like I said, you're going to hell. There's these, there's these consequences or whatever, whatever, all the fear-based stuff I had to get rid of. I had to get it out of my life. Well, I, um, I tried to find another church to go to and all my experiences were not the best to say the the least. And I found it to be more uh, about man than it was about God, Mm -hmm. their rules, not God's rules. And I'm a very spiritual person, but I, I talk to God, you know, like he says, you can go to your closet and pray. And that's what I do. Uh, I, I talk to him and I'm, I feel like I'm on my spiritual path again. And I'm a lot Have happier. Have you considered starting your own church? I've thought about that actually. Oh, that's uh, why I'm asking. <laughs> I, I have thought about that a few times. So, um, yeah. I'm wondering if you could do your own like spiritual based metaphysical type church. Um, I just think that that would be great for you. That, something to consider. I mean, I've thought about it. Um, I haven't acted upon it, but I've thought about it. I, I think I can come up to some good messages. And, and I mean, I used to be a good preacher, not to toot my own horn, but I was a good preacher. Yeah, no, that's why you did it. <laughs> you were good at using your voice to deliver deliver inspiration. And, and that's really, now, now you're just in a place where you redirect. And Every day is a redirection. I, I think God was just trying to, get us in a better mindset and be more positive. And when you're, you're in that positive mindset, you treat other people a lot better. Yeah. Uh, I would say the more that we have grace for ourselves, the more we have grace for others. We used to say grace means God's riches at Christ's expense. Oh, I like that. (laughs) And speaking on God, you you uh, you do angel work as well. Yeah, so I I would say that I've definitely worked with angels. I've seen angels. I've seen Jesus. I've seen wow. all kinds of things. So um, I've seen Buddha. I've seen um, all kinds of all kinds of masters and all kinds of beings. Um, and I would say angels is definitely one of the ones that I've worked with, um, for sure. Wow. you you come to a place where you just know you can call on whoever you want right. and that's kind of where I'm at it's like if I have um a certain need for certain things or certain abilities then I will call on those and if I don't even know in my mind well I don't know which angel does that one or or, or which angel angel might serve that way then my soul just kind of already knows and the angel will come anyway oh wow you, you have to go into to a situation for me because I'd love to hear more about this so are you talking about like specifically like like calling on an angel to help you just in any any situation <laughs> that, that you want to talk about i can well so guides are a little different than angels but i can mm-hmm. tell you a time that i called on my spirit guide and then when it happened it scared the bejesus out of me and i called the cops on my angel that is a real story and i have a real police report Oh no. Page police report. And there's a reason why this is an important story too, because it goes to show how insane things are when you are waking up to your abilities. They don't make sense and they are not of this world. So it wouldn't make sense in our world. And I definitely had an experience like that. If you want to hear about that one. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. So this was in 2017. I had just come out of the closet about being a psychic, like just barely. And I was living in this house in Lago Vista with a roommate. The roommate was like never there, but I was there a lot because I was going to school full time. So I was, I was there most of the time running the house, doing schoolwork, whatever. And at the time, some psychic had told me, um, actually it was Sylvia Brown's son. He had told me, um, he had told me that my guide's name was Renee. And I was like, huh? Okay. Well, I was really pissed about that. I was like, how the fuck? Can he know your name? And I don't, I'm really butthurt about this stuff. And so I was mad. I was legit mad. So I was like, I don't understand this and I'm not okay with this. And so I was like asking, I was like, and plus I knew I had two guides. So there was two guides, 
Renee was apparently one of them. And there was a second guide, but I didn't know who it was. So I was trying to tap into that ability on my own without somebody else telling me who it was. I was like, this is my guide. I should be able to have this connection on my own. So I had been asking my guide um, to show up. Hey, I want to see you like how, you know, it takes time. It takes practice. And my ego was really in charge at the time. So that made it harder for me to connect. Mm -hmm. And, um, over this course of few months, I was getting signs. They were writing names on my walls. They were leaving piles of sunflower seeds at my doors and nobody in the house had sunflower seeds. They'd be like at the back door, the side door, the front door piles that were already unpeeled, like they'd been eaten and spit out, but they were perfectly piled. And I was like, what in the world? This is so weird. So I was just getting all these signs. And then one day I went out in the backyard and um, I, I was planting something. I was out in the backyard, digging in the dirt, watering, planting. And I had this whole feeling come over me. And I was like, somebody is watching me. And you know, okay. First, I'm going to stop and say when a lot of times I feel that way because as a psychic, I'm always being watched and interacted with. So that's kind of, of normal. But this one was a little more intense. It was like, oh, I'm here. And I was like, oh, that's a heavy feeling. Like I was like, okay, somebody's watching me, but it creeped me out. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go inside because that was a little too much for me. It was a little overwhelming. So I went inside and I noticed the time it was roughly about four o'clock. And I was like, oh, you know what? Let me go down and check the mail. So I had to go down this driveway it's like a very steep driveway. So you go down this little driveway hill and I'm getting ready to approach the mailbox and there's this road and I'm about, I'm about to step onto the road and I do step onto the road. And all of a sudden this, these birds just kind of like burst in front of me. Like there was like, I don't know how to explain it. It was like, it was just like these doves all of a sudden just kind of went all directions. And I was like, where the fuck did that come from? But then I looked back at the road because I looked up and then looked back and I was on this road by myself and there's a man standing there in front of me and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> so he's, he looks like a normal man. He's, he's heavy set. He had on a ball cap. He had on a bright orange, like almost like a hunting shirt. You know how you have to wear orange or whatever for hunting. Right, right, right. So it was like construction hunting. I don't know. He looked like a normal man, Je jeans, tennis shoes, whatever. And I was like, where the fuck did he come out of? Like, I didn't, I have no idea how he got there. And I remember just being like, hey, like I was very standoffish. I was like, hey, it was kind of creepy. Um, and then I think my ego kicked in after that. And I just kind of like, was like, oh my God. And I kind of booked it up the driveway, but I'm looking for him everywhere. And I'm like looking, I remember I get in the house and I'm looking down the road and he's already gone. He's completely disappeared. And I'm like, what the fuck? Cause you can see like down the road, even from the backyard where I was looking, you can still see down the road um, where this person would have went. And I'm like, he's gone. Like just as fast as he came, he was gone. So I'm at this point now I'm panicked because I'm thinking there's some man spying on me from the woods. That's what mm -hmm. I'm thinking, right? My ego totally fucking freaked out. So now I'm on the phone with my roommate, he's on his way home and he takes me to the cop shop because I'm going to file a police report because somebody's spying on me in the woods. So we go down to the police department. I file this three page police report and um, I get home and I'm really freaked out, right? Really, really scared. Like all ego at this point, like I'm not even letting spiritual information come in because I'm freaked out. So now I'm blacking out all the curtains. I'm making sure nobody can look in anywhere. I'm completely upset and I feel violated, right? Cause I really feel like this is fucked up. And, um, it took me about a week to calm down <laughs> and, um, about a week, it might've been even two weeks. It was, it was a while. It took me a bit, a minute to calm down. But then, um, I remember having a conversation with somebody and then I was like, I remember my guide was like, um, you know, you asked to see us and I was like, Oh my God, that was you. I just fucking called the cops on my angel. Who does that? So, <laughs> who does that? so like, it was this whole thing because they did originally say in the beginning, they were like, well, it's going to scare you. And I'm like, oh no, it's not. If I'm asking to see you, it's not going to scare me. But then sure enough, it scared the shit out of me. And then I called the cops on them. And so like, it was this whole thing. It's a hilarious story, but it's, it's worth mentioning because 
even people that are trained psychic mediums like I am now, um, go through experiences where it seems fucking completely insane. So that's why I say, even if it feels insane and it doesn't make sense, it does not matter what anybody says. That shit is a real experience for you. And it is, it matters. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I called the cops on my spirit guy. <laughs> yeah. Who does that? Apparently I like to do that. Oh my goodness. Well, I thank you so much for coming on the show. And I, if you would, what, what is your uh, website? So it's exordiumhealing.com. And so, uh, what about social media? Yeah. So Facebook, I'm on Facebook. You can find me at April DeMille and I have a Facebook page. That's also April DeMille for my business. And people can go to the website and, and book readings with you. And, and yeah, they, you can hit the message button and just reach out to me because I book everything manually right now. Okay, cool, cool. Well, again, thank you for your time and being on here and sharing your stories with us. And uh, maybe I get you on my other show and talk about yeah. your life coaching a little more. Yeah, sure. That would be great. And thank you for having me. I'd love talking to you. I let you're very chill. I love your vibe. I, I try to chill out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> try to go with it. <laughs> well, you're welcome back anytime. And if you have anything you'd like to promote, please let me know. I, I would love to, to be in a part of that. Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. If anybody wants to work with me, um, sometimes people like to just work with me as a psychic uh, reading first and kind of get to feel for my vibe. And then they decide if they want to coach or mentor with me. So that's kind of how it works. Mm. Love for you to go uh, on an investigation with us sometime. That would be uh, very interesting. Just yeah, don't call yeah. the cops on the spirits that show up, okay? <laughs> for sure. For sure. <laughs> thank you so much. And I also want to thank all of you out there. If you are new to the channel, and I appreciate you stopping by, if you would, please hit that subscribe button, and I hope you'll come back. For those of you who are my regulars, and it's because of y'all that I get to do this. So until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace. Paul Boy.